Acetaminophen, also known as paracetamol, is the most common cause of acute liver failure in several countries. It's found in many over-the-counter products used for relieving pain and fever. But it can be dangerous if used incorrectly, for example, in suicide attempts. In this MedMastery lesson, we'll cover the mechanism of acetaminophen toxicity. Let's begin with the story of one of my patients that represents a problem we see on a regular basis in the emergency department. A 16-year-old girl was brought in by her parents after she took an overdose of acetaminophen. Her parents determined that she took 6,000 milligrams about eight hours ago. On physical examination, the patient appeared confused. She was vomiting and complaining of pain in her right upper abdomen. So what happened to this patient? Well, acetaminophen undergoes a few chemical reactions in the liver, and its non-toxic byproducts get sent to the kidneys, where they leave the body through the urine. This occurs through a direct and indirect route. The direct route is how approximately 90% is processed. The liver metabolizes acetaminophen in a single step by swapping one chemical part for another, and this non-toxic byproduct goes straight to the kidney. The indirect route is how up to 8% is processed. The liver uses a special enzyme system known as P450 that creates a toxic byproduct called N-acetyl-P-benzoquinonamine, or NAPKI. The liver then performs a second chemical reaction to protect itself. Specifically, glutathione changes NAPKI into a non-toxic byproduct, and this is sent to the kidney. For completeness, about 2% doesn't get processed and travels straight to the kidney. So how does acetaminophen overdose cause liver damage? Well, think of this process as a mass transit system like a train. In this analogy, the stations represent the organs, the passengers represent acetaminophen and its byproducts, the train represents the chemical reactions that break the drug down into its byproducts, and the train tracks represent the different routes those byproducts take. Imagine it's rush hour, and people are trying to get to work. Most passengers prefer to take the express train directly from the liver station to the kidney station. A few passengers take the slow train that requires them to make a stop between the liver and kidney stations. This stop represents NAPKI, so the passengers have to get on a connecting train to avoid getting stuck at the station. The connecting train represents glutathione, which we just reviewed is necessary to create a non-toxic byproduct from NAPKI. Finally, a small number of people don't take the train at all and drive themselves directly to the kidney station. Let's apply some numbers. Say that 100 people are on their way to work. So 90 get on the express train, 8 take the slow train and successfully get on the connecting train at the NAPKI stop, and 2 drive themselves. Now let's see what happens during an overdose using our train analogy. Instead of 100, let's say there are 300 people on their way to work. About 2%, so 6 people, drive themselves. So now we're left with 294 people in a hurry to get to work. But the express train can only carry 100 passengers. So once those 100 people get on, what happens to the remaining 194? Well, their only option is to get on the slow train. So the slow train starts dropping people off at the NAPKI stop, but because it's so crowded and there aren't enough connecting trains, 100 passengers get left behind at the stop and don't make it to the kidney station. This is analogous to NAPKI building up and not getting changed into its non-toxic byproduct, which is very dangerous because NAPKI is toxic to liver cells. When there is too much NAPKI inside liver cells, it attaches itself to proteins and doesn't let go. As a result, these proteins can't do their usual jobs, like making blood clotting proteins, so the liver cells start to die. And patients start to experience upper right abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, bleeding, and confusion, some of which our patient complained of. The inflamed liver starts to release aspartate aminotransferase, or AST, and alanine aminotransferase, or ALT, which can be detected in blood tests. And because the liver can no longer make blood clotting proteins, the prothrombin time increases. If the liver damage is left untreated, the liver becomes permanently scarred and no longer works. So patients will require a liver transplant, and without it, they may not survive. So I hope you liked this video. 
absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.